In this episode, I'm gonna show you all the steps I do to rent a car, down to the websites I use, to the thought processes, and just to every little nuance along the way. So in our previous Travel Hacks episode, we seem to be using Paris as our uh, point of search. So we'll continue that here. Uh, I've picked uh, the Charles de Gaulle Airport again, and uh, you can type in Paris or the airport code. Um, one thing to note, it is always lesser expensive to rent a car in say a downtown or anywhere away from the airport. The airport always charges a premium price, but the airport's more convenient uh, if you've flown there. So I tend to just go ahead and do that. Uh, but uh, I'm gonna pick uh, Charles de Gaulle Airport Terminal 1. Um, I've picked the 20, I'm gonna pick the 21st through the 27th of August. And if you notice, it's uh, got 12 noon uh, as my pickup time, but 9 a.m. as my drop off. Uh, ideally, I mean, you owe, you basically are paying for that car for in 24 hour increments. So. You know, I, I always try to figure out when do I really need to drop it off and and then I back into it and hopefully that, that somewhat aligns with when I'm actually picking it up. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and tell it 12 noon for a pickup and 12 noon for a uh, drop off. Click show offers. So you've got options as such as vehicle category, seats and everything, but you'll see some of these uh, for unlimited kilometers, I can get a little small car for 14 dollars and 99 cents a day. That's just really incredible. Uh, you don't typically see uh, car prices uh, for that inexpensive in the United States. Um, I'm now going to go to Auto Europe and do the same search and Charles de Gaulle and then I'm going to pick August the 21st, uh, a noon pickup time. August the 27th a noon drop off time. And one thing to note, most rental car companies will give you one hour being late. That's not one hour and one minute. That's just one hour. Okay, so here we go. Find your car. And in the case of them, they're actually giving, rather than giving me the price per day, they're giving me the uh, total price. Uh, so if I go back over to sixth, um, you know, I can go pick a car and, and show that as well. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll pick a compact car and I'll go over to sixth and do the same thing. I'll say, show me the, they're giving me different options. And so I'm getting like a Peugeot 308 here. So let's see what a Peugeot 308, uh, which is what they're showing this here. So we'll pick that. So in the case of this, I can pay online or I can pay later. If I pay later, I can cancel for free on 6th. It's $8.82 to pay later though. There's an extra charge and that charge varies. It's based on the rental. So basically if I pay now, I can go ahead and save some extra money. So I can select this. It's $177.05 for those dates. Whereas it's $181.10 over here for that same car and we're just going to see what they come out to with taxes and everything. On 6th it says taxes are included, but notice they have this GPS guaranteed for $12.92 per day, so I don't want that. $12.92 a day would be very expensive after the uh, this rental. And in the case of Auto Europe, it's $181.10. But one thing to note, I can call Auto Europe and mention this uh, and you know, get a quote from them, and they'll typically uh, it'll typically be less than this, and especially if I bring up the fact that 
uh, sixth is actually less than them. So there's some play in this and uh, you can really uh, work it out well. Hey, sir, how can I help you? Oh, uh, yes, I have a reservation. Uh, last name? Uh, it's Griffith. First name is Matt. Great. Okay, we've got you in a full size today. Uh, would you like to do an upgrade today for a small fee? Uh, no, I'm good with what I've got. Often they'll try to do an upgrade for you. It's just a way for them to make more money, and rarely is that upgrade actually more value. What you bought online, the rate that you got online, is almost always the cheapest rate. Okay, and we have a special today, actually, that you can get GPS added to this for just five bucks per day. Uh, no thanks. Often they'll try to upgrade you on GPS and it's anywhere from $5 to $15 a day, which I personally think is ridiculous because after a week of renting the car, you could have bought the GPS yourself. And the thing is, on mid-size and full-size cars, almost all of those cars these days already have GPS in them. And so the thing is, is they're just going to rent you a car that already has a GPS in it and get more money out of you for that GPS that they would have gave you for free otherwise. Economy cars, sometimes they have GPS as well, but you know what, if they don't, you have a phone. Everybody has smartphones these days, and you have either Google Maps or Apple Maps or some other kind of map on it. And those maps rock, so save yourself some money. And we've got four insurance packages. The basic one is just 20 bucks per day. Should I go ahead and put you down for that? Uh, no, thank you. I already have uh, car insurance. I live in the United States, so you know we're required by law to have car insurance, and my car insurance covers these rental cars. The insurance that they sell you is probably the biggest scam available because if you live in the United States and you have a driver's license, you're required by law to have car insurance. Well, the thing is, is your car insurance covers you on any car you drive, even a car rental, even your friend's car. So save your money because you're just duplicating that insurance. You do live in the United States, and yes, you are required by law to have it. You got me, sir. You got me. All right, but I'm going to assume you want us to fill it up with our gas when you bring it back, right? No, I'll, I'll bring it uh, with the gas already in it. <sighs> when you return your car, they expect you to return it full, but they do offer to fill it up for you. And the thing is, you're not paying normal gas prices. It's usually double, if not triple and you're looking at six, seven, eight bucks a gallon for them to fill it up. Save yourself some money. All right, so we've got you with uh, no GPS, no insurance, you're gonna fill it up with gas yourself, and you're gonna stick with the full size. Oh, and, but hey, look, and the, this car actually does have its own GPS, so you'll get that included for free. Uh, is there anything else I can do for you? Uh, no, that's good. Uh, great, okay, we'll have an attendant bring it around. Sounds good, thank you very much. And when renting a car in Europe, things are similar, but just a little bit different. Bonjour. Hello, uh, do you speak English? Uh, yes, I speak the English. Uh, I what have do a, you want? I have a car reservation. Okay. Uh, name? It's Griffith. Griffith. First name is Matt. M Matthew, yes. We have you here with the first as car. Is that correct? That's correct. And would you like an upgrade today for your big American ass? Wow, no thank you. Uh, actually, the upgrades are always just something that allows them to make more money. You got the best deal online. And I assume you do not know how to drive, so I will put you in an automatic car for a small fee. Uh, no, uh, manual's fine. Are you sure? Yes. Uh, a lot of times they'll try to get you to upgrade to an automatic. Uh, if you rent a manual, manual is always the cheapest, and in Europe, Golly, probably 90, 95% of the cars are manual transmission. And you will pay a premium for an automatic transmission. Now, most people in the United States don't know how to drive manuals anymore. But if you do, you can save a lot of money. And uh, if you are going to get an automatic, you should have rented it online that way because that's going to be the cheaper place to get it. They're always, always going to pay more at the car rental place. And you will want GPS because your people know nothing of geography. Uh, no, I'm good with that. I have GPS on my phone. Oh, very well. And again, your car's probably going to come with GPS. Car rental places almost always get their cars with GPS so that they don't have to actually give you an extra GPS. And you have a smartphone. Use it. Yes, okay, and you are definitely not in America now, so you will want to purchase one of our lovely insurances. Uh, no, I'm good. I have, uh, my uh, credit card actually has insurance. Your credit card? My credit card. 
if you rent this with a, say, a Visa signature card, and if you look down by the logo, it'll say signature on it. Most Visa cards are signature cards. Those cards will actually cover you on your car rental. And the best way to prove this is just go to visa.com slash signature and you can read all the terms. And it actually te explicitly tells you if you get their car rental insurance, then Visa will not cover you. They only cover you if they are the only rental insurance on it. Uh, and I assume you will be using as much gas as possible because your people care nothing of the environment, so we will fill it up for you when you return it. No, I'm good. I'll bring it back full. Again, they're going to charge you an astronomical fee for returning the car with less gas and them having to fill it up. You're going to be paying two, maybe three times what gas normally costs. Uh, very well. You are all set. I hope you have an adequate stay in our country. Thank you very much. Uh, Americans. And if renting in Europe, don't forget to familiarize yourself with their road signs as many are different than they are in the United States. The most important thing I want you to take away from this car rental segment is you don't need the insurance. Do you have that? You don't need the insurance. The two sites I use the most when I'm booking a place to stay uh, is Trivago and Airbnb, and it doesn't really matter where I'm staying in the world. Uh, both of those sites work really well. Uh, Trivago, uh, while it's owned by Expedia, uh, still looks up Booking.com and all of its competitors. Uh, so uh, it seems to be fairly transparent. Um, and it will actually show you the aggregation. So uh, say there's a, uh, like there's a hotel I stay at in Germany. Um, it will show me all of the different uh, booking sites such as Expedia, Booking.com, uh, orbits, whatever the case may be, even sites you haven't even heard of, and show the prices for each. And one thing you want to be careful of is making sure that if one might come with breakfast and one may not. So you want to evaluate that. Uh, but it's a fantastic site. Now, I will say that I prefer Airbnb when I can get a place that is economical. Uh, because there's nothing like having a place where you have, say, a kitchen and a living room. Um, makes you feel more at home. So, uh, and, now, and of course, not all Airbnbs have that, but, uh, but yeah, many do. And uh, you, you sometimes find a really neat, cute place that way. So uh, let's continue our search and um, we'll do one, we'll continue to use Paris. So I've put Paris in. Uh, let's pick um, the 21st through the 27th, two person. And I'll do the same thing for Airbnb. Uh, so we're gonna say Paris. And Airbnb has started doing something called experiences. So, uh, so I wanna choose uh, places to stay versus the experiences. And I'll pick my dates. And we're doing the 21st through the 27th. I'll pick my guests, which will be two, as what we've picked for the uh, the other site. And you can pick the type of place with um, Airbnb. You have options of entire place, private room, a hotel room, or a shared room. I usually will try to pick entire place first because that's where you're going to get a usually a little bit more posh place. And uh, click save. Now under more filters you have options for like how many beds because maybe there are four of you traveling but maybe two of you are going to be sleeping in the same bed and the other two need their own individual beds. So you can actually choose that under more filters. But in the case of here I've already found a place that's $56 a night. It says it's a charming apartment near uh, Batignolias. Uh, I probably butchered that um, and we'll probably have a bunch of comments saying that I did. Uh, so, uh, uh, in the case of Trivago, I have places that are 119, 81, 87, and of course you can sort um, by price. So, uh, so right now it's sorted by their recommendations. Uh, so I'm going to sort by price and recommended. 
and I'll probably get some, so basically they start at 81 here on Trivago. Now another site worth checking out is uh, Booking.com because sometimes you'll find deals on Booking.com that for whatever reason aren't on here. So Hotels.com is a place where I book a lot with uh, because Hotels.com has a rewards program where every 10 nights you stay you get a free night and that free night is based on the averages of those 10 stays. So in the case of Trivago where they're showing all these different sites like this first one shows hotel website which is the actual hotels website that you can book through booking.com and travel up and then says more deals from eighty dollars so i'm going to click that more deals and it will show me what other options there are and as i see here i've got hotels.com for eighty one dollars and so in the case of that i would rather book with that because that's getting me that much closer to a free night so and one thing to keep in mind with that Hotels.com uh, free night, I never use the free night for a hotel that costs less than my free night. Uh, so if my free night is valued at say $92, I wouldn't use my Hotels.com free night to pay for this uh, hotel because I'm missing out on 10 bucks because that's forever gone. I would rather get a hotel that's say $100 and just pay the difference uh, because I got the full value of that money. Now if I come back over to Airbnb, this $56 place, I can scroll through the photos and it is, uh, it looks like a cute little place. Um, so here's a place more comparable to the price of the one on Trivago. It says beautiful studio in the 11th district of Paris and the photos look great. Uh, wow, looks like it's got great views too. So. Uh, things like that are, these are little gems that you can find uh, on Airbnb that are someone's other home. Uh, or maybe they've basically have one or two extra homes that they've fixed up to for the purpose of renting out as, you know, extra income. So uh, they, uh, they tend to have them dressed up really well. So I've had very good success with Airbnb. It's uh, one of my favorite places to uh, book through. Now, if you're traveling from the US to Europe or vice versa, one other thing you'll need for your hotels is a converter. And you'll need a different converter depending on where you go. So for instance, this is a converter that will convert uh, Europe plugs back to the US plug. Uh, this is a plug that will convert uh, a US plug to a Europe plug. And this one, uh, it's a little bit bulkier, uh, is used in the United Kingdom. Uh, so it's the one place that's different in Europe. But it will convert your plug, your US plug to, to this. Um, it'll also actually do the uh, Europe plug. So this Europe plug can plug right in here as well. Another thing that I have uh, that I keep in my bag, and I've been doing this for years, and uh, because when you go to hotels, um, even hotels in the United States, a lot of times an outlet's kind of hard to find. Uh, they might only have one or two outlets and you're like, really? We live in an electronic age. So, um, so I keep a little mini travel surge strip. And so this one has three outlets and a USB port. What I do is I'll plug my Europe adapter on the end of that and now it makes this whole outlet able to plug in. So now I've got, with one outlet, I've got three outlets plus a USB to be able to charge, you know, say my iPad, my iPhone, um, and whatever other accessories I have. A camera maybe needs batteries charged. So, uh, or if you're traveling with somebody, it lets them charge theirs as well. So, uh, and these are wonderful at an airport. When you go to an airport, a lot of times all the outlets that are available are all consumed by people. You can usually walk up and ask somebody, hey, do you mind if I unplug your phone and plug this in and then I can plug your phone back in this? And they're usually more than willing to do that. So uh, plus now you've made an extra person happy and maybe even another person because you've got essentially four ways to charge with this. And these are relatively inexpensive. You can buy these on Amazon and 
These little adapters can also be bought on Amazon. These are really inexpensive on Amazon. Another thing I like to bring along with me is a little cigarette lighter plug that has two USB ports in it. I have a few of these. Um, I've, got, I've even got one that I think has four of them in it, uh, and it's a little bit larger when it comes out, but I tend to like these smaller ones because uh, sometimes the cigarette lighter in the car is in an obscure place and doesn't have a lot of room around it. Um, and the other reason why I have so many is because I sometimes forget to take them out of the rental car when I return it, so uh, I end up losing it. But, um, uh, you know, this is an Audi, so uh, it obviously has USB ports in it, as do most new cars. But a lot of economy cars do not, and if you've got a little bit of older car that you've rented, it may not. So by just having something this small in your bag, to take with you, uh, it guarantees that you always have a place to charge your phone in your car. And if you're using GPS uh, for the GPS in your phone for your car, then uh, as you know, GPS burns your battery like crazy. So this allows you to keep charging while you're driving. So on standalone GPSs, I bought a TomTom Tom 930 back in 2009. Now, I've just started in the past couple of weeks getting notices from TomTom Tom that it no longer will accept their map updates, uh, that they're just not compatible. And you might say, well, it's 10 years old, um, so you can't expect that thing to last forever. But keep in mind that uh, I have a Copilot app on my phone that I bought in 2010 that still works and I still get updates for it and they don't cost me anything and that's nine years old. And of course, one other thing to note is uh, most people don't keep a phone for nine or 10 years. Um, they break, you drop them, whatever the case may be, or you just want the next newest thing. So anything you have for that, you're always getting something new. That TomTom Tom GPS that I bought back in 2009 just stopped working about four years ago. So I bought this one four years ago. Well, the thing is, is because I have Google Maps, Apple Maps, um, I have the Copilot Maps on my phone, um, I just don't have a need for this, so I don't use it. And most of the time when I get a car rental anyway, it has a GPS already in it. So, uh, so this was, I want to say, I think 170 some dollars. The one before that was 250. These are just honestly a thing of the past.